how we see the world today is that um, the volatility, especially given what's happening in terms of rising rates, mm. uh, the unwanted volatility coming through uh, the, the episode in Saudi Arabia, and also emerging markets turmoil, it's causing a lot of uh, negative sentiment in our markets. So we do think that volatility in the short term could continue and persist in the near term. Mm. But I think if you're a longer term investor taking a longer term view on say Asian markets for example, uh, it could actually offer de decent value for the longer term investor who's, who's taking a 12 to 18 months view because valuations have actually been beaten down quite badly. Uh, Asia is now trading about 11 times for a PE, one standard deviation below its 10 year historical average. So yes, negative headlines in terms of rising rates, uh, in terms of a higher dollar, but I think that has partially been priced in with that 16% year to date correction. When you talk about the valuations, though, relatively speaking, compared to the United States, let's say, sure, bargain hunters may want to take advantage right, of those exactly. valuations. But if you're looking for safety, some may say there is a reason valuations are at that level, because you're looking at a region that is so vulnerable to the ongoing trade tensions. Is that fair? A absolutely. Absolutely, Nancy. I mean, um, as, as I mentioned, the volatility would likely continue in the very short term. Uh, if you're, you can't stomach the volatility, mm. then perhaps you, know, you should be looking at more safe haven. But if you're a longer term investor, a lot of the clients take a longer term view, a, a 12 to 18 months kind of view. Uh, you know, that kind of uh, time horizon, perhaps you could be looking at uh, some form of value out there in, in Hong Kong, China, for example. The, the H shares about eight times for a PE, the A shares about 11 times. Uh, if you're seeking for you know, the kind of dividend play, more defensive kind of thing, uh, Singapore actually offers one, one uh, of the most attractive dividend deals across the Asia Pacific region uh, to the tune of about 4.6% as well. So there, there are opportunities depending on your kind of investment horizon and depending on how much volatility you can uh, undertake. Interesting when you were talking about the concerns around Saudi Arabia and right. the disappearance mm -hmm. of Mr. Khashoggi, you talked about it being sentiment driven. And I agree with you. At the moment, it has been very much a sentiment factor. But then we think of the potential for it to impact oil prices. And that could be critical for fundamentals in some of the Southeast Asian economies as well. Is that something you're watching? Uh, absolutely. I mean, if oil prices were to jump, uh, a, tr uh, you know, a sharp jump, I think that would affect the inflation outlook for a lot of countries, particularly the, the US as well. So that, that's going to cause quite a bit of uh, turmoil and volatility coming through, but that's not our base case at this point. Uh, it, it comes true. It comes true. Will be a likely a short term one rather than longer term sustained one. And uh, I think going forward, we're still relatively positive on the ASEAN domestic economy rather than the external economy because the rise of the ASEAN uh, consumer, domestic consumer, is still uh, very, very strong. Uh, we do foresee that 65% of uh, ASEAN consumer would be entering the middle class by 2030. And that's going to be a very strong tailwind for the ASEAN domestic consumption sector going forward. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.